I'm going to show how I make a, a guard out of copper for, for one of these miniature swords. So, I'm use this wire. Let me cut some. So, an easy way to get this insulation off is to just hammer it. And it It just splits. And so then keep hammer then hammer this wire to flatten it. And so it's kind of hard to it's kind of hard to keep it to keep it straight because this is a this is softer than the nails. But I guess I can correct that. So now I'm going to make an opening, a opening in this in this copper piece to fit the the sword into. And so there, so I can use this this punch that's to. Uh, so. Use this punch to make an indentation. Mm. Now, now let's be sure to only do this on a surface you don't mind putting putting holes in because I should also try to get it as close to the get, get the get it as close to the center of the piece as you can and so now that it's now that it's bent like this I use this cutting wheel to create a to create a a wide a wide enough slit. And so for for this I I use the thinnest cutting wheel I have, the thinnest kind I have. But these ones break very easily, so I don't use these ones for anything else. So, So a slightly thicker cutting wheel might also might also work, but using this thinnest one will create a the, it'll have a really tight fit and might not even need to glue it.
So, so once once you have once you've begun to make a slit, you can you can put more put another two indentations on either side of the the first one. again so so, so hmm. when I make these the part that is formed by the head of the nail they tend to be they tend to be a bit thicker than the rest so so you can't can't really put it on this way which I think is how you would make a real sword well I guess you would, you would put the pommel on after put on the guard I guess and so uh, so it usually works better to put it on like this. Uh, so, and you might, when you're, because it's copper, you might be able to just force it in. Uh, if you have something, uh, if you have, you could have two way to support it like this and then hammer it like that but uh, so let's see if see if I can if this is if this opening's big enough so, let's see So, turns out it is. So, so, I'll try to straighten this out a little. So, so this is pretty tight. Doesn't, doesn't move very much. But, uh, I guess, uh, now I'm, so now I'm going to, Find the. Now I'm going to try to create a better shape for, for this. And also make the two. Uh, make, make the two parts in equal length or closer to equal. And so for this, I'm going to use a thicker cutting wheel, and because I'm not actually cutting, doesn't matter how doesn't matter how thick it is because I'm mostly going to be mostly going to use the flat sides which I don't think you're really supposed to do but uh, I guess usually works for me especially if it's a thicker one mm. So I actually think the difference in length is big enough that it's probably better to just 
cut it a little. So, might be better, might be better to do this before putting the guard on the sword, because this, this might loosen it. And it also becomes, also becomes really hot pretty fast, so... Holding it with pliers. So, so I guess we can we can continue to do this to can continue to do this to get a get closer to the shape I want. But I think that just about shows shows a that just about shows how I do this. So I ground this a little bit more, and so so I guess one way to deal with the problem of it becoming really hot is to just just to use some ice to just stick it in, just stick it into a piece of ice, and it cools down really fast. And so once once belt like this. Uh, can also just uh, use the sanding wheel. So, so, 
So I guess the shape is about done. So not not sure if I mentioned this in a previous video, but I have a sand another sanding wheel that's it's been really worn down because it's been used so much. It already had the finest abrasive of any of my sanding wheels, but it's now it's almost completely worn down. And that but what it's good for now is creating a very smooth and shiny finish. So I guess it's about done. Just put it back. So I guess it's not as tight as it was. But uh, so when when I glue, uh, so when I glue two pieces of wood to create the handle, and I glue two pieces of wood to the either side of the tang. I'll be able to put some glue on the guard right there and there and it'll attach to those pieces of wood and it'll, it'll be it'll be it'll be pretty secure. And I want to just straighten this out a little. And Another thing is that, is that especially for a straight sword like this, it's it's better to it's best to put the guard on after sharpening it because uh, so uh, because can't it's it's hard to the it's like. Well, maybe maybe for for one that's this long it, it might work fine but but uh but uh the guard can get in the way of, of sharpening it and, and so and so you know. and so another, another thing is that instead of using the punch to begin making the the opening you can also just bend the piece a lot and then and uh, then and then only use the only use the 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 cutting wheel but the problem is with that is that straighten it straightening it out after bending it weakens it a lot more but I guess that that's less of a problem with this copper than 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 with a flattened piece of a nail which is what I used to use and if you and I, I guess using using one of the using something like that it's the same process as what I showed here so I guess that's all so I've decided to show how I make now I further secure the guard by gluing the handle scales to it. So, so I've more recently started to use these pieces to make the handle scales instead of those cylindrical pieces because you know, it's better to save those for 
for things that for the for the for the shafts of of pole arm like weapons or other things that I can only use those for. two pieces which are the length of the handle side of the guard and make sure to make sure that this this uh so that it's glued to both the guard and the tang. Make sure it's straight before the glue dries. And then do that on the same thing on the other side. And so we try to get some of this excess glue and put it on the other side. need to wait for that to dry and can start grinding you can start uh, sanding that that those wooden parts into shape and so 